am Lord Hastings of Scarisbrick, which really is Michael Hastings. I am Global Head of Corporate Citizenship for KPMG International. KPMG is a network of independent member firms in about 155 countries around the world. We have 160,000 people working across our firms and most of the purpose of what our business is about is providing security for both the financial services system, the capital markets, and for governments and how they provide and facilitate their public services. What I do here is lead the strategic direction on corporate sustainability for the internal firm and also our relationships on international development priorities and the position of our leaders in how they see their role in the world. So when I, for example, uh, seven years ago took the proposition to the KPMG board that there was a role to play for auditors, tax advisors, business consultants in understanding the Millennium Development Goals to give passionate attention to why prosperity making and therefore poverty reduction was totally relevant to our business strategy, why our role in empowering emerging markets was central to how we developed the business around the world, let alone our position of being a service provider. When I took that proposition to them, I needed to persuade them, rather than to give them something that they just signed as an order, that actually it was in the interests of their partners and their people to follow suit. So I think a critical role in empowering change in a partnership is, is vision, and then practical demonstration of how that vision delivers difference. In other words, does it build the capacity of the organization to be strong. And I would say, without doubt, we've been able to do that. If I move on to the area of international development, the big idea had to be for us that the Millennium Development Goals were as relevant to us as they were to an NGO. They were as relevant to us as they were to the UN. They were as relevant to us as they might be to investors who are looking to invest in Latin America, Southeast Asia, across the continent of Africa and its countries. So what would we do practically? Well, what we would do practically is we would buddy up with some of the biggest NGOs in the world, World Vision, Save the Children, UNICEF, Millennium Promise, etc. We'd have six strategic partnerships. We'd ask the, the leading NGOs how we could assist them more effectively to do their job. Because one of the things that they tell us all the time is they need greater efficiency, they need better strategic planning, they need good financial management systems, they need improved governance, they need sharper ways to make ideas more practicable and deliverable. KPMG has the people who can do that. Do we also do the hands-on bit on the ground? Yes, we absolutely do. We do believe, I believe very firmly, that uh, there is no longer an appropriate separation between the NGO commitment to development, the business commitment to development, and the governmental commitment to development. We, we jointly authored with the World Economic Forum a major report on the future of civil society. That future that we describe in that report is that this is a common three-sided approach and that all of us need to be in this for the solutions we've got to find, not for the territory we've got to define independently. So we see our role as working in tandem with a local NGO, they're working in tandem with a global business, government has a role to play substantially not just in resourcing but also setting the framework to allow the development to happen, but we've got to be jointly accountable for the outcomes. If it then became the case, say, in 2030, that big business organizations were doing more than major well-known NGOs in the development space, I would rejoice at that. I wouldn't say let, they shouldn't do it. I would say let the NGOs continue to do what they do. I'm a vice president of UNICEF. I want UNICEF to thrive in what it's doing, but I don't want to pretend that if in the malnutrition program we've just kicked off UNICEF for Liberia, that if all of a sudden a major food provider came along and said, we'll meet that need for the next four years, we're not going to say no, leave it to us, we're UNICEF, we're best. We say, business, come along, let's do this together. Let's get it done. And I hope that as we, as we mature in this understanding between businesses, NGOs and governments, we, we actually break the territories down, not, not keep them up. And if I can be candid, the people who tend to keep them up are the NGOs and not the businesses. They see the development sector as their territory. Well, no, it's the territory that belongs to the people with needs. And our responsibility is, if we are possible supporters and providers, let's get the others out the way and go together to make sure we get 
the job done. As long as the convening organizations like the World Economic Forum and the UN Global Compact keep their foot to the floor, this will be led well. Chief executives, company chairmen, businesses will come together and will achieve, will want to achieve this. But what we need is a common partnership between all the development players, a coordination between the development players. We have governments across Europe who put money into European Union common bilateral funds, but then still act independently outside of that in how they spend the other two-thirds of their resources. We get very little coordination between government ODA assistance groups worldwide. We've got to see that happen at governmental level. We have NGOs who take up specific uh, campaigns about themes and issues in contradiction to another NGO taking up a campaign about themes that we need more effective coordination and merging to take place between development NGOs. And we have companies that must set agendas together where their expertise can be best delivered. Now, all of that mean, does need leadership at every conceivable level. And I at long last believe that that leadership is evident in our world. I saw it in practice in the UN Global Compact Leaders Summit. There's no shortage of leadership to deliver what we need now is that leadership to deliver, to sit around common tables and find single solutions. At long last, we can talk about opportunities for some of what were previously the poorest countries of the world being themselves ODA providers. What a great, a great privilege that is. So we get genuine collaboration taking place between all the providers, north and south, east and west. We get the job done, we solve the problem, we see the end of long-term hunger.